Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So I have something to show you. I got this off of Amazon and uh, it's really cute. Uh, the company, I can't pronounce it because it's Chinese, but there is a link if you go to the Amazon site. Uh, I have Amazon Prime, but and I would highly recommend that by the way. Uh, there is a link that you can hover over and click on and it will take you to their store. Um, so there's that. Uh, I, this particular, it's 40 piece empty half pans with magnetic strip, watercolor paint, travel, tin palette case. Artist paints half pan kits for DIY watercolor oils or acrylics painting art. Now, the cool thing about these particular this particular site, and it, it is spelled Q-I-N-S-H-A-N. I'm going to say Quan Shan. <laughs> that's, that's my best guess. But it comes in a really cool arrangement of, like you can just buy the pans and the magnetic strips by themselves without a case. Or you can buy, uh, they have like roses, which is the one I got. They have some with different flowers on them. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. Um, and there's also um, one with a Van Gogh Starry Night print on it. It's kind of neat. So that's something to check out. It was 10 bucks, you guys. <clears throat> so these are the little half cans. Now, personally, most of the time, I just take out what I'm going to use and, you know, out of my tubes and I put it into something like this. And you can just leave it, honestly, and it will reactivate. Um, these are just like some of my cheap paints. That's typically what I do, but I've been starting to experiment with stuff like this um, and just to see how that kind of kind of works for me. So these are those, and then this is the tin. Came nicely packaged, so I mean, nothing fancy, but you know, very adequate. Um, let's see. And it's, it's nothing fancy, but it is really super cute. I mean, look at that. It's cute, right? I, I love roses, so they're a pain to grow, but there's a little, like, little, you know, just, I guess, to, for protection. And you could probably put it on the top here in case you, like, close your lid and something's too wet. Or you could use this to tap your brushes on. Like, if you're, what do they call it, Pl plain, plain air pa painting? Oh, I think so. Um, this could be used as a thing to sort of, like, tap your brush on. And then there's the little magnetic strips. Make sure you. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so you could put that in here, which I haven't done yet. Um, what I thought I'd show you real quick. So I have these little droppers that I got at Hobby Lobby. Curate Color is one of their, I think, one of their brands. But um, I have some others, and I can't seem to find them that I got on Amazon. Um, but you know, I figured these would do. Uh, clip that open. And I'm going to show you one way you can just do like this and they will reactivate, like I said earlier. Um, you can, okay, but better this way. And especially if you're using your nicer paints, um, th these, the other ones I just showed you are my cheap, kind of my cheapy paints. I don't really care, but they do reactivate. Um, so I'm not really that worried about them. I think I got them, uh, I think it was, ah, shoot, um, Michael's generic name or something like that brand name for watercolors, just to, something to play around with and not cry if I, something happens. <clears throat> like some of these paints I have, I would sort of cry for a couple of them. <laughs> so, what you do is you take this. You put it on here just like that Oops. And there you go I did this with another I had a little 
uh, mint tin that had Bob Rossi on it, and I, I did something very similar to this. Um, it had the, like some terrible tasting candy in it or something, but I kept the tin because it had Bob Rossi on it. So once you get that in there like that, um, or you can do it out of it, I would recommend kind of doing it out of it. Unless you want to, you, you know, unless you don't mind if it accidentally spills. But what I'm going to show you is one way to sort of uh, prolong the paints, especially if they're your nicer paints. You know, while it'll react activate, this will help prolong it and keep it from getting a little bit moldy and stuff like that. Craft Smart Glycerin. Now, you got to be careful to get the right kind of glycerin. It took me a minute to make sure I had to have some poor young lady who didn't know either to sort of work with me to figure out what it was that I needed. This is ideal for life ex of extending life of inks, transfer inks, improved acrylic paints, snow globes, and stamp cleaner. So, okay, there we go. There we go. All right, now what you're gonna do is take a paint, and I've got these paints here because I'm going to fill up all of those. I get these cool paints here that I decided I have a nice cross section of reds and blues and pinks and yellows and some a couple of different browns a couple of different whites you know just a little of everything that's why I got the biggest set I, I could get there because I wanted to be able to do that <clears throat> all right now we're back all right so what you want to do is grab your paint first let's say I'll go oh oh I did just for you guys um, cause I, I don't want to, it, it does come off, but it, it doesn't always come off right away. So that's the other thing. I'm going to use the plastic from the wrap here, just in case this poor Matt's seen some abuse. Uh, they're expensive though. They run about 50 bucks. <laughs> so yeah, I try, I try not to mess it up. <laughs> now I've noticed with Van Gogh's, and this is just a side note, they're, um, paints will come oozing out of the tube like I mean it just exploding almost not quite but um so that's just why it's a little hard to open because um it's the lids kind of tubes their paint is known to do this it's it's not an unheard of complaint um they refuse to acknowledge it the one person said something about it and they were like oh it did my who's that some we tested it didn't do like that and I'm like I, I, they're just BSing it is a, a a common problem. Now I've used this enough that it doesn't do that, but you can see where it, it, it did. And I was constantly having to clean it. So take your paint and put it in, put some in. Don't like fill it up though, okay? And just and that's another reason why I have the gloves on is I don't want to get this all over me. It's it's a pain to get off. It it is, and um, yeah, Phalo Ultramarine, extremely staining. Paints gray, they're very 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 staining, highly staining. Don't hit this too hard, or you'll splash the paint, but just enough that it settles it. And that's another reason why you don't want to fill it out. And it also sort of gets out any bubbles that might be. If that happens, just grab, I honestly, this is one of the best tools before I knew how, what tools to use. This is one of your best tools, just as a, another side note, because they're skewers like for, you know, shish kebabs and stuff. And if, um, it, when it gets dirty or dull or whatever, you just grab your, or an exacto knife and just zoop, like that. And not only do you clean it, but you sharpen it. And they're like maybe two, three bucks for a, a bunch of them. They, that I will them down to about here and then I toss them or unless they break, but either way it's, it's, it, they're, you can just do it like this and then kind of give it a, a little shake. This kind of helps to make sure you don't have a lot of air bubbles and things of that sort. Like I said, so what you want to do is get your little dropper. Um, and I highly recommend these. It, it, the, $1.50 at Hobby Lobby. If you don't have Hobby Lobby, Amazon. There's other kinds. You can get the little medical kind that still work for this. And just one, 
only need one to two drops. That's it. And I know this the hard way because when I added too much, I added like three or four. I didn't know any better. I was playing, I was just goofing around. And it made the paint very oily. So when I say one to two, even if it's a full pan, one to two is all you need. Or otherwise you're gonna paint's just gonna be oily and it, it, it ruins it. It was cheap paint, so I didn't care, but for this paint, not so much. It, this is still budgety, but it's not as budgety as what I was using, thankfully. You can see I, that that was that quick and just take your excess. Um, hold on, you probably can't see. And just take your excess and just squeeze it back into, um, sorry, my kitties want my attention. And then you just put it somewhere else. I don't know. I, I'm just going to set it to the side here. Make sure you leave the lid on, or put the lid on because this <clears throat> would make a serious mess. And I think I paid, oh my gosh, I've had this for a little minute. So I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, this is the glycerin, not for food. That's what I was trying to mention to you earlier. And I forgot senior moment. <clears throat> The, when I was talking about the right kind of glycerin, this is the kind for crafts. They're, they have glycerin that's for food. Um, so, things of that nature. So, make sure you get the kind for, for like, crafts and, and stuff. Not the kind for food. Okay? See? Not for food use. So, that's really important. I think a lot of people, when they're doing certain things they tend to use glycerin um and but they use they end up using the wrong kind and it can be a disaster so i've already put that in and i'm gonna gently put the lid on and i'm going to give it another stir oops make sure you use the right end and make sure you guys can see what i'm doing or i'll hold this up sorry there we go and just give it a gentle stir Now, um, sorry, I'm trying to talk and chew gum. It's like, you really want to make sure this is evenly distributed as well. It's really important. Just wipe off in the corner a little bit. Make sure you have a paper towel or a hand towel like this because you will need it. See what I mean by how staining that is? Imagine that on your skin. My allergies are going crazy. And I'm glad that I used this little piece of plastic because you see where I did splatter the paint a little? Yeah. So, give it another little tap. Not so hard that you do that. <laughs> you see how nice and pretty that looks? Now, what you're going to do... Oops, make sure you can see. Okay, what you're going to do is let this set overnight. Come back to the next day. So pretend this is the next day. It's set up. You want to take your paint and fill it up again. And you do that till it's as full as you can you can overflow it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Because that's a that's a special skill that people that make watercolor paints for a living have acquired. I would fill it up to the top. And you just have to keep redoing that. You might have to add one additional drop at the top layer, but I say one, maybe a half of one, okay? If you can imagine, just a half one. I mean, we're a real teeny, 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 teeny bit. Stir it gently, give it a gentle tap, because by then it'll be pretty full, super gentle. And you will have yourself a whole new palette. See, and I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna arrange it by colors. I've got a bunch of, um, See, these are the paints that I'm going to use minus this, this one. I've got some nice little cross section of blues and greens and reds. Um, a couple of blacks. You know. Oh, and this is terracotta. Because a bunch started coming out of the tube. And it wasn't the Van Gogh. It was um, M. Graham. And it just kept exploding out of it. And I was like, oh my god. I'm All this paint, expensive paint. M. Graham is like Cotman, which is... Um, 
the generic of Windsor Newton, I believe. I believe. Um, and like Artist Loft, which is a, uh, Michael's generic brand. Uh, this really is absolutely worth it. It's, it's budget paint that is absolutely fabulous. You do not have to spend, you know, the kind of money that I spent on this. Um, Daniel Smith, extra fine uh, quinacridone rose. You don't have to. Uh, you know, there are plenty of uh, budget paints like the Cotman, which is, it is the Windsor Newton. Um, they're like student grade. It's excellent, excellent. Van Gogh is mid, I wouldn't say it's high, but it's close. It's excellent, highly pigmented. This is also staining, by the way, it, as I think it's matter. Hold on, let me break up my thing here. Yeah, matter red, matter lake deep, excuse me. This is excellent. Excellent, very staining though. So, just, you know, make sure you wear gloves. I highly recommend it. Um, I didn't the last time I was playing around with this and I kind of regretted it. <laughs> Things got messy. <laughs> So that, that's just that. But um, yeah, I'm going to um, fill all these up. And because that's going to take a minute. And um, I think the next day, after everything's set up, I will show you guys again what the, you know, process. Because it'll look a little different, like I was saying about the half drop. So let's, you fill it up about, this is, I would say it's, it's pretty close to half, maybe a tad over. Um, but you got to leave at least a little bit, you know, like this at the, at the top. Okay. So I will come back and we'll finish this off and that will be that. Um, so stay tuned people. Bye for now. Hey guys, so this is the last part of the video. I've let some of this dry. Oops, let me turn it this way. Sorry. I let some of it dry and set up and then I refilled it and I'm a, we're going to talk about some things that I think are important. So let me state, but first of all, that I'm not a professional watercolor maker. Okay. As you can tell, I'm not a professional at, at that. I'm still, I'm still learning a little bit myself. But, as you can see, that it's come up pretty good. Now, the thing that I want to talk about is the difference in how some of them look. Um, so, you see how th this one is cracked and that one's kind of cracked. Uh, this one's sort of cracked. Those are the really budgety uh, watercolors that are a little bit old. And the problem which you get with the older watercolors uh, is that they tend to go bad faster. Or not the older watercolors, the, the, the super cheap ones tend to go bad a little bit faster. Um, they have more fillers, you know, so forth. So, like this one is not too bad. This is Master's Touch and that's this one right here. And it's not too bad. However, the, this yellow ochre, if I can find the... These are the, I put these paints into this little container because I didn't want to forget, you know, which ones I used. I think the yellow ochre is a Artist, Artist Loft, which is a Michaels uh, brand. And that's kind of what I'm looking for right now. Here it is. Okay. There, so I have two Artist Lofts in, in here. I have this Artist Loft, which is uh, a little bit different grade than this. This one's a little higher of a grade of uh, watercolor than this artist loft. Okay, so this is more like something you would use for like children, older children, not like five year olds, but you know, 10 year olds or something. It's not bad, it's okay, uh, but this one's, this one's a little bit better. Okay, this, that's, that's what this is, is that right there. Uh, um, I don't know if you could tell. Okay, and so what happens when you pour the paint into, let me get rid of my list. <clears throat> when you pour paint that's a little bit old and is not, you know, the highest end type of paint, 
this sort of thing right here can happen. It, it, it can crack. Plus, I probably didn't use quite enough of the glycerin. I don't I hesitate to add too much because, as you can see, with a couple of them, it gets the, it can get a little shiny. Uh, and you, so you really do have to be very, very careful with how much of that glycerin you add. It can really cause some problems and ruin your watercolor. And most of these are, are student grade, but there's a few that are a little above that. Like I have some M grams, um, which are, are, they're not like selenium per se, but they're not, they're really, really, really good paint nonetheless. But that's why that did that. The, and the other thing that I wanna talk about is this one. I had to take this one out because not only did I forget my paints gray, which let me state is a must for any watercolor palette. Um, you must, must have a paints gray. And the reason why I say that is it is one of those like miracle colors that just changes so many other colors and for the better. Now, is it gonna, you know, reflect well on every single color? No. But Payne's Gray, if you're going to like have a list of 12 colors per se, um, but, you know, way smaller than this, Payne's Gray is an absolute must for, for any watercolor palette. Unless it's like pastels, eh, then maybe not. But yeah, Payne's Gray is a must. And I realized I had forgotten it. So I was like, ah, oh, crud. So I took out my Chinese white. Now this is Academy, which I got from Hobby Lobby. I've had it for maybe a few months, six months. But when I went to push it out, it had solidified on me and I was like, oh my gosh. So, okay. <laughs> this is what, even though I tried to add some glycerin and you know a little bit of water, this is what it looks like. It, it looks absolutely horrible. Like, I, I think it'll still work. Um, I'm going to find out, but there's an obvious difference too, but the white that's here, that's, that's titanium white. Can you see the, let me see if you make sure you can see, can you see the difference? The titanium is much brighter. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to keep this and play around with it and see if it's still good. But I figured if I was going to take out one, the, the one that's kind of not great, that one can go. Because paint's great, it, it's just got to be included. This is what happened, and I was just like, crap, really? I don't know how it was when I got it, but it got it on clearance, so that might tell you something. Watch this. That, that, oh, sorry. That ain't normal. You see how stiff that is? That is not normal. That should not be coming out like that. So, if any of you guys know how I can fix this and salvage this paint, um, I don't know if it's gonna work in here or not. Um, I might try adding a little more glycerin to that um, and see if I can salvage it. Um, I was sort of ticked when I saw that. I was just like, really? So, that's just something to be aware of. I'm not sure what else I can do to try and fix that. Always keep a tissue or hand towel, paper towel, something like that, because paint, painting is messy. So anyway, some of the nicer ones, um, see I made a list, always make a list right here. So row one, row two, three, four, always make a list. And as you can see, some most of my higher ones, like my Van Gogh, and again, I know they're not like Selenier or some of the other ones out there, but they are a very, very excellent, excellent grade of student paints. Very, like the Phalo, oh my gosh, it is, and my Ultra, it is so, they're so vibrant. It's And they're highly staining, as I mentioned earlier in the video, so you might want to get like a thing of these gloves but look how freaking vibrant this is it's just it's bananas look at that it's absolutely bananas it so just be very careful it it, it they it really does that and the ultramarine really do oh my gosh really do and there we go let's chop the mess okay so you can see that those ones uh did really well on um, my cotman which is the one next to it 
Uh, the intense blue is nice looking. My Va other Van Gogh is nice looking. The ones that really I had issues with, with one or two exceptions, were the really lower grade of, they don't last as long. They just don't because they just weren't made with the same kind of care and attention to detail as some of the student grades or the selenier types, you know. But it's still usable. So, and I could not believe that. I could not find any yellow, any other yellow ochre in a tube besides this. I was like, really? So, I will be remedying that soon. Um, but what I did is I put my Payne's Gray here next to um, my lamp, lamp Black. Um, so, there's the Lamp Black. And I have two blacks. And I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I, ha I have two and three actually and that's because they're so so very different um the oxide black the ivory black and the lamp black uh, are entirely different like um here i'll sh i know this is a rabbit hole but i'm gonna show you let me get a, a piece of uh paper here Ugh. i'll show you what i mean as a as a side note here uh, Okay, sorry. Let's pull this aside. I'll show you why. I I'm gonna explain something really quick and I'll show you why. Always keep some of this stuff handy, trust me. I have a box of them on my floor. <laughs> so, this is the um, oxide black, okay? I'm gonna dip some water in this, you'll see. Uh, by the way, oxide black from Van Gogh is granulating. It is very, very granulating. It's uh, amazing, amazing paint. You don't have to spend, you know, $100 or something on a tube of paint. It's just, you see how quickly it activated? I hope you can. Um, so let's push this aside so that you can see. This is the Oxide Black. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? And watch it as I as I kind of go. Watch how that granulates. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Now, you see all the little the little um, beads of paint. I don't know. If, that's the pigment granulated here. I'm gonna see so you can see. You guys see that? All of that. That's that means it's granulating. All those little spots of pigment, that's the granulation. It's fantastic. Um, it is honestly one of the coolest colors I've, I've ever come across. It's great for if you're doing um, night, night sky, uh, la uh, some of the darker like rocks and, and, and certain things of that sort. It's, it's fantastic, fantastic, versatile color. I'm only just begun to explore it uh truthfully i haven't had it more than a few months and i'm just absolutely in love with this color wait do you see when it dries so i'm going to wrench my brush and i'm going to look on my map because a lot of these colors down here all look the same that is why it's very important to have a map of what you're doing and for now i haven't swatched any of the colors like on on anything i'm gonna be doing that um Let's see, uh, make sure I have the right row. So my ivory black is next. And that would be this one right here. So I'm gonna get that in there a little bit. I separated my ivory black and my lamp black with a couple of dark browns because I wanted to not mix them up as easily. <laughs> my vision is a little sketchy some days, so. Hopefully you can see that. I may need to scooch in a little bit. It, it activated pretty easily too. I believe this was by Master's Touch, which is the Hobby Lobby generic, like Artist Loft is Michael's generic brand. Master's Touch is Hobby Lobby's brand. But this is also a little bit granulating, but not as much as the Oxide Black. Okay, not quite as much. It's, do you see how um, warm it is? 
Like that's that's kind of a warm black. Ta-da! It's a nice warm black. And if you my uh, stuff that I my setup may be causing some shadows. If it does, I'm really sorry about that. I hope you'll look past that little issue. Um, so let's go to two more over and go to the uh, make sure I get the right one. Okay, the lamp black is right before the paint's gray, so that would be this one. See what I mean about it being important to have a map? <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to drop the water on there and let it kind of set for just a few seconds. You don't want to just plunge right in, okay? And you see how I didn't like dig, I just kind of gently tapped? That's another thing. Now. But look at the uh, lamp black, especially as it dries. It's also a little bit granulating. The most granulating being the oxide black, obviously. Now, I don't know like the pigment specs or none of that. I, I, I'm only just beginning to learn. I know on the Master's Touch, I think, I don't see, I don't see anything right off that that says it says it conforms to you know the the certain standards um i'm not sure about like if it talks about the pigments per se uh van gogh does now this is the uh ultramarine i believe yeah so it's not the oxide black but i don't know if you can tell but on their bottles they do let's see if you can tell let's see if i can get my camera to focus do -do. You can see right here, where my above where my thumb is. That is where it shows the opaqueness level, and uh, the trans you know how transparent it is, etc. That is very helpful, um, and I'm I'm starting to learn about that, and I still I'm just continuing to dig into it and learn about that. So. These are what I mean by it, why it's different to have um, different blacks. The oxide black just is so super granulating. It has a bit of brown in it. So it's just so good for like, uh, you know, like I said, dirt, rocks, maybe certain treescapes, um, you know, like I said, night sky, that kind of thing. Now, I got it twisted actually. The, the ivory black is very brown. So that it, it's very, it's like a very warm black. Now, if you look at the lamp black, it's warm to a certain extent, but it's much cooler. It's less, less of, less browny than the uh, ivory. So each one has a different, of all of them, I think that the ivory probably has the most brown, but the, the lamp is a little bit cooler. And this one is just a, this wonderful granulating mix of both it's i think in my opinion it's just that oxide black just whew, it absolutely blew my mind when i was trying to do some rocks with it and it was just like oh wow highly recommend that color uh i don't know if other other groups do that um besides van gogh do that color i would assume so but i don't know i know daniel smith has certain colors that are just for them so I don't know about that, but yeah, that's a little fun little side tour. That's why having different blacks is important because they're all a little bit different. So back to this, the most of them did pretty well. I had to add a little bit more glycerin and a little bit of water to get some of them to not look kind of like that. And that's, that's my Daniel Smith that did that. I was like, wow, it's not that old either. My, 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 my violet did that. So I was a little surprised, you know, that, um, it went down like that. It's not too bad though. So, I mean, if I was selling it, I guess it would be, it came out pretty good. And I mean, for what I paid for it, there's, I would also make sure that your pants are dry before you put this on. Um, but isn't that absolutely adorable? So back to the other thing that I was going to show you guys a fun little thing that you can do to swatch your paints 
do instead of getting a resist crayon, which this is a resist crayon. Sorry, hold on. There we go. You can get these from Hobby Lobby, you know, Wal I don't know if Walmart has it. Uh, Michaels, Amazon, whatever. Not too horribly expensive. They're basically a clear crayon. However, if you're doing something like this, what I'm about to do, this, this could be very useful, what I'm about to show you, just to keep it sort of, because I have a, a 40 pans worth of paint to, to put onto here, front and back probably. So, grab this. This is your secret right here. That, that's your secret, people, right there. And I don't mean this per se, uh, but this, this kind of sharpener works really good for the resist crayons and the regular crayons. This one, I could use this sharpener in the back. They had these when I was a kid. <laughs> Boy, this takes me back, my gosh. All right, so I might just use this because it's a little handier than trying to having to turn that around. So what you're gonna do is, you know, make sure you follow your list and grab your crayon and, Let's see, so my first thing on my list is phalo blue. So to me, phalo blue is, and you can do like a, a test swatch if you're not sure. I have a piece of paper uh, that's handy, you know, I've got this. And if you're not sure, just, you know, grab a scrap piece of paper, drop a little water. In fact, you know what, here, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to spray all of this with some water, but I have to take it off camera because I don't want to get my paper wet. But I'm sure I've mentioned this before. This is a very, very worthwhile thing to get. Okay, it sprays it out a, a really nice fine mist. All right, so as you can see, it's, it's wetted it all pretty nicely. And I'm going to stick my finger in the paint. All right, I've got my brush wet. I'm going to use my paper towel to just do a little test paint of this. Ooh, look at that sucker. That is just gorgeous. And it is so grind, it's a little bit granulating. I think it's relatively transparent, but oh, it's just so staining and granulating. It's just incredible. So that gives me an idea of what to look for here. So pull out your crayon and you say, let's see what's gonna match here. Let's try this one. You can get the closest that you can to it. That's, a, it's not bad. Could be a little darker. Ooh, that would go with the magnesium one. Ooh, my, the magnesium green. I'm gonna keep that out because that will fit for that perfectly. Let's see, let's try this one. That's pretty close. All right, so we have a winner. Turquoise blue. So, what you do, going everywhere. All right, take your crayon, make sure, make sure you got some camera, and also a Sharpie, first of all. Sharpies are a little more water resistant, or if you have a Micron pen, um, that works too. And I'm just gonna write row one. Now, I wasn't paying attention to what I'm doing, but this paper, both sides are pretty bumpy. There's usually one flatter side and one side that's bumpy. Um, this paper apparently doesn't have that, so. Then take your crayon. Make sure it's sharp, by the way. So you can either use this sharpener or the one in the box. And however big you want your swatch to be. Oops, sort of messed up. Yeah. Watch out for um, the uh, yes. You can see the unevenness unevenness of the um, thing is sort of causing some issues. Um, so what you want to do instead of smearing that away with your hand is just grab something like this and just do that. It's a little better. I'm gonna just make that look nice and neat. Okay. Now you take your and I would even it also write the name of the crayon and the name of the paint. Um, I think that's probably a great idea. So let's see. Uh, 
and I don't really need to write the name of it because it's, uh, you know, the brand because I've already got it on this list. But uh, the crayon that I used, yep, turquoise blue. And Crayola. And that just reminds me that I'm using the crayon because, you know, when you get to be my age, uh, senior moments are a thing. <laughs> Truly. All right. So I'm going to go over here. Pull this over here. Drop some water down just to make sure it's, it hasn't dried because you can see where it's already started to dry some. So let's push that to the side. Watch this. Hopefully you guys can see. There we go. All right. Watch this. And I'm going to wipe on my towel. I wipe the excess on my towel because I'm going to not, I'm not dipping it in the water. And then I'm just going to drag the paint forward. And there you go. It's not a perfect match, but the paint is not going anywhere. Oops, I'm a little OCD. Make sure your paint hasn't dried too much, by the way, because mine sort of did, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of a little OCD about my uh, swatches. <laughs> it's a, it's. A... And there you go. Just rinse it. Get it on the brush if you want to. You don't always have to rinse it. I didn't the first time. And I'm just going to drag it along again and make it a little bit darker. There we go. That looks better. I'm happy with that. You see how pretty that is? Ta-da! A piece of cake. And you don't have to worry about it going all over the paper, going into, running into the next swatch uh, space. It's it will It won't go anywhere. Unless you fill up the tooth of the paper higher than the level of the crayon. So it's the same way with the oil, you know, pastel pen, uh, crayons. That's why you just kind of put it on there nice and dark to where the tooth is filled out, you know, brush it away. And that way you can fill it up just enough to make a good swatch. Sometimes you might have to go back in and do it again. But that's kind of the deal. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just do all the rest of this and I will include a photo of that um, when I'm done. And yeah, I think that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. It was fun to do and I highly, highly recommend something like this because sometimes the two paints are just a pain to deal with. And while this was a pain to do, uh, you know, I have my own palette the way I want it with the things that matter to me in it. And I've got, um, yeah, give it a try guys. And let me know, you know, if you've tried it and did it work for you? I would really love to know. And please don't uh, forget to like, share and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I am trying really hard to grow my channel and I'm almost, I, I'm not too far from 500 and I think at 500 I can monetize. So I would really love to be able to do that, you know, make a little retirement money for the hubby and I. So, um, yeah, I love you all. Have a great blessed day and uh, take care of yourselves. All right. Look after your mental health. All right. Bye, guys.